G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Space. Today, I have a video from Sarah Dawn Moore that we're gonna talk through. It's called 10 Lies Women Were Told About Men. So I'm not sure if I'll get through the whole thing. Uh, we'll use it as a talking point, so I'll just get started. Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Sarah Dawn Moore, and on this channel, we dive into modern dating, relationships, mental health, and of course, my favorite topic today, men. This is just the honest truth about what we were told about what men really want and what they don't want. A special thank you goes out to my channel members for your support. You keep things running and provide me with the ability to stay away from the shackles of corporate America. And I am- Thank you for the ability by, you know, selling your hopes and dreams. I don't really know what she does, but um, that is, I think that just comment just really tells you all why a lot of women get into this space. Um, she has 500k subscribers. This video has 200k views. Um, I would say mostly these people would be men and men who are resonating and are being drawn to women who can, you know, speak to their experiences in life and be on their team. So I'm always really skeptical. I know nothing about it, but I'm always super skeptical of it. I'm indebted to you for that. Guys, drop a comment below and let me know if I miss anything. So number one is guys have this insatiable sexual appetite and that they can't commit. The more I get to know guys and what they're all about, <laughs> this couldn't be further from the truth. But because of the invention of dating apps and our screwed up dating market right now, of course, most of the men that women are swiping on are the ones that can't commit. Is it so much not committing, right? So I, I love these comments that, that are said that women say, oh, men can't commit or don't want to commit. Now, he doesn't want to commit um, to you. So being someone who went through a pretty bad time with um, a divorce, everything, coming out the other side, uh, going on dating apps, it was like women were putting so much pressure on me to try and lock me down very, very quickly. And they couldn't understand why this approach wasn't working. Yes, it was for the matter that I was getting a lot of variety. So is isn't that men just love sex, like, you know, heaping heaps of sex with one girl. Uh, men like variety. So they can get variety. That's what they're going to do. Um, but eventually one will come along that he may commit to. Second to that is a lot of men um, are very starting to get very clued on to sort of how things work and just how risky um, a commitment uh, to a woman is. Can't commit, and there are a horde of women all over social media complaining about this, but the average man or 90% of men out there would kill to have a loyal, decent woman who would make them a sandwich every once in a while. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Number two. Hey, you're not kidding. I would love that. I'm, I've always been very attracted to um women especially um dating on the other side of divorce who are more homely who are really nice to me and nurturing to me and wanted to show care by making a simple meal all right and men love that so no she shouldn't be kidding uh we actually do want to be made a sandwich metaphorically all right Men are unemotional. Many of the differences in the ways that men and women express emotions are just simply a result of cultural traditions and expectations of how they're supposed to act. Women are allowed to express certain emotions without judgment and men are expected to suppress certain emotions, but men guys. deal with a crippling fear of rejection from partners, from women, along with societal expectations of how to display no, this is wrong. So it isn't a crippling fear of, um, of rejection um, for, you know, trying to articulate yourself. It's just not doing it. It isn't, a, it, it's caution. It's not a fear of rejection. It's just caution. And no matter how much society or women in your life will say um, they want to hear your struggles, they want to walk hand in hand with you through your struggles, be there for you, whatever it is, no one gives a shit about the problems of men, Right. Not even your wives, girlfriends, uh, girls you're banging in the back of the VN, whatever it is, guys. They don't care. They'll ask you. They'll want to tell, they want you to tell them. I've had this happen to me on many occasions. I learned this firsthand. I didn't just read this stuff or hear this stuff and go, oh, that's what it is. I've seen this happen many times. You know, they'll be pouring out their heart about something. <clears throat> then they'll put it on to you. You know, they want to talk. They want to learn about you more. They start picking. They're digging. 
And the moment you say, oh, yeah, well, you know, I've got this thing going on at work and, yeah, it's really pressured and I'm really stressed about it and I don't want to get out of bed in the morning or whatever it is to go and face the day. I'm just dreading going to sleep. You just see eyes just glaze over. Like, they don't give a fuck. And, and, and it is very much true that it turns them off because it's their instinct. So regardless of what the narrative is that they want men to share um, vulnerability with them or anxieties with them, uh, what actually happens when you do that uh, is the is the opposite of what um, you're going to tell that you're going to get is that they want to be with a sensitive guy that they, they don't. Certain emotions. So every time a man opens up his mouth, he has to think about the ramifications of his emotions and how those are going to be perceived by his loved ones or even strangers. We don't allow men to cry. We don't allow men to be weak because most women's vajayjays would dry up like the Sahara Desert on a summer day. Very true. So what is a man to do? A lot of women complain that men go from zero to 100 within a few seconds. And I've, I get it. I've experienced this myself. But women do the same thing. It's just that a lot of men have not learned how to regulate their emotions because we don't teach men how to do that because we're we tell them to man up. So of course women think that they're handicapped with their emotions, but really we just don't have a lot of patience for men in our society. But men are rather emotional. Number three, men- I think we're just all humans. We're not as emotional as a woman um, with first-hand experience living with women and being married. But I can tell you now, we feel, uh, we have anxieties, we have stresses, so we're not robots. But, very good point she made, which is true. As much as society wants us to talk about it and be open and all of that, the moment you do it, you've lost them. Want a woman who will be submissive and just a 1950s housewife. So really, I don't think that this is true for most men. I think men do appreciate women who like to work or like to bring home and contribute something and that not all the burden of maintaining a household falls on his shoulders because it's a lot of pressure and nowadays what men do not appreciate is when they have to come home to a very competitive wife and or girlfriend a lot of women will also be you know they were working and you know they will kind of out try to outshine his accomplishments and the biggest complaint that i hear from men is though they never feel that they are recognized strictly for or their accomplishments it's always kind of no one gives a fuck about you that's the reality of it like they might be um into it in the start they might pump your tires up and all that but the reason why they go with you and why you might um you know why they don't care about your accomplishments once they've got their hooks into you is because they're now benefiting from your success they don't need to pump your tires up about it and it is true there are a lot of type a people in the world and it's not just um women right but a lot of type a's a lot of women in those corporate roles are type a's they want to be better than you they want to be better than anyone they want to compete so you're going to get that um a lot of the time they, they, they want you, you get a pay rise oh they feel like they're better than you they should have a pay rise you know they're going to say things or luck or whatever it is right place right time whatever like, like like sort of bring you down a peg as opposed to you being wanting to be pumped up that's been my experience this like quid pro quo where they turn back to the woman and what she's doing and all the things that she's doing and let's be honest men get a lot of their value and drive by doing by their accomplishments by providing and protecting and you know they're cool with like going off to war but at least can we like congratulate them when they get back right i'm not fucking cool i'm not going <laughs> i'm not cool going off to war they want to be recognized and appreciated for their efforts and for their sacrifices from the women in their life so I think one of the things that I had to learn was to go to work, right? Go do your thing, live your dream life. You do you, big sis. But at the end of the day, if you want to have a good man, you need to you know, appreciate what he does and just say thank you every once in a while. I think what most women don't understand- Even the chick in that little stock footage was like, stop crying, you fucking little bitch. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Pat, pat, pat. Uh is that he would absolutely be your biggest fan if you were to recognize him. But women don't lead with that femininity. They think that being strong is going off to work, is like getting accomplishments, and, and kind of they become like this one-up. And guys don't like that. So my suggestion is to girls, like, go get your recognition and, and feel good about that. But don't just rely on your man because there's nothing more amazing and more gratifying to a man than his woman recognizing his efforts to be you know, the protector and the provider and to recognize his growth that he's 
you know, that he's putting in. And they don't appreciate that. Uh, ask any bloke who's ended up in divorce court. Won't be appreciating it then. They might be appreciating um, what they feel like they've uh, contributed, which is a lot of the time nowhere near as what they get on the way out. But all your accomplishments, they just don't matter anymore. And another big lie, number four, men like to chase. One of the biggest lies, I think, in the history of men. Good men do not like to chase after women. Now, there is Good a men. distinct difference between a girl who's playing hard to get and or using her best judgment to kind of pace physical intimacy in a new courting relationship. A woman has a lot of power in the beginning of a relationship to control the pace of how things are going, especially from a physical standpoint. As long as a man feels that there is reciprocation happening, that there is a back and forth, that he knows that you're interested, he's not He's not going to get breadcrumbs. He's not going to be okay with that, but he also doesn't want to chase. But yeah, a lot of guys are okay with that because they don't understand the game. But yeah, guys who are very much aware of female nature through their own trials and tribulations uh, definitely find it to be off-putting to chase. Um, any any time a woman ever played hard to get uh, with me, especially when I came out of divorce and all that sort of stuff and was really awake as to what goes on in this world, instant write-off. You're gone, all right? I don't believe in games. I don't think there should be games. And I don't think men like to chase. Men don't like dating. It's nice to have the company of a nice woman, but men don't like to chase, be interviewed, and throw money around chasing women. That's something that they've made up as a narrative that men like doing that. It feeds into our masculinity. No, it doesn't. That's a psyop. Like, we didn't have to do it. We wouldn't. Uh. There's a lot of women who are taught to play games, taught to not respond, you know, for many hours, to be out and about, to act like they're not interested because men only like, you know, a challenge. And once they get that challenge, they feel like, um, you know, oh, the chase is over. But I used to do it all the time. Every, any, any time I was getting a sniff of this on the dating apps with women, um, I'd go, yep, yep. It goes into the, um, into the vault and I've instantly put her into the pump and dump category the root and boot category, the back of the VN category, guys. Um, I was not going to put up with any rubbish. I, I might put up with a few things along the way. I was going to get what I was going to get, and I was going to Jason Bourne and just disappear on her, right? Because that's all uh, the only value she was going to have to me. She was always going to be difficult in the early stages when you're not even dating her, let alone dating, so you know what you're in for. So I think those behaviors that they're taught by women to be difficult, unavailable, um, those backfire, especially with guys who know women and know what they want out of their life and what they want in a woman and uh, a difficult, unavailable, cold, nonchalant woman is not one of them. I find it incredible. Emotionally unavailable does not equate to high value. So a man will only try so hard. A man will only give so much before he says, you know what, I'm done with this. Uh, she's not giving to me what I want or she's just probably entertaining five other guys. Yep. So, you know, you'll, you'll like lose him because yep. he's just, he won't chase. If a woman is really smart about dating and knows you know, who she is, she's going to initiate text messages. She's going to initiate interactions, probably let's say 30% of the time, and then let, let him take the lead the rest of the time. But a guy is not gonna stick around if there is zero interest from a girl. Oh, they do, they do. Uh, they're called guys in the friend zone. It's very, very common. Or orbiters, guys who think they're gonna have a chance if they hang around them and, and butter them up. She'll see how good I am. Men have self-esteem and self-worth issues just like women do, but we expect them to be these like almighty pursuers and chasers and to pass every shit test. <laughs> we expect them to like cross over this barrier and come after us, but that's just not how things work. That's just not the case with good men. And especially What about bad men? Bad men get more chicks than good men, I can tell you that much. Being a scumbag, um, not giving a shit, being almost narcissistic in all of the traits that I had uh, post-divorce dating, guys, I just did not give a shit. I did the Hulk Hogan heel turn to the NWA, right? I didn't care, right? Um, I can tell you what, I've never swam in more clunge in my entire life, ever. It was almost limitless by being a jerk. So I don't agree with that. Good men don't get all the girls, Especially men who have other options, they'll definitely will only put up with that for so long 
or they'll like hit it and quit it because it's like way too much of a game and yep. another girl is probably going to be willing to give him a little more reciprocation all right number five if they look at another woman or are attracted to another woman that means that they just aren't in as interested in you <laughs> we want to bang every chick in the world it's just the way that we're born well look maybe you guys at home do right you dirty little monster hunters at home creeping around the streets late at night in your VNs. I know what you get up to, boys. But it's true, guys will generally take a look at a lot um, if it's average or above and it's got some uh, viewpoints, you know, uh, points of interest on the body, nice boobs, bum, whatever, face, hair, whatever it might be, a guy's going to look. Doesn't mean uh, we're not interested in that girl anymore. Just because you look at this other girl. Catches your eye. Just the way it goes. What a lie. If a man looks at another woman, it does not mean that he wants to leave you for her. It doesn't mean that he even wants to sleep with her. Okay, maybe just a little, but men are visual creatures. So when a beautiful woman walks by, it's almost as like the color red is flashing in your eyes. It's, it's just a little diversion. So just like when we walk into Target and get sideswiped by the latest dollar lines on the left side of the store. Oh, bullshit, Sarah Dawn Moore. You guys love perving on blokes. Don't even say, oh, we're just little angels and once we have a boyfriend, we don't look. You are all looking. You're all looking. Don't even start with it. All right, guys, halfway through this video, uh, if you're enjoying the content, uh, please subscribe to the channel. And the best way you can help me out and the channel grow is just to watch my videos uh, through as long as you can handle. Uh, that's what YouTube values and that's what gets me pushed out to a wider audience, guys. Thanks women you know what i'm talking about we're just drawn to different things and men are just drawn to beautiful women but that doesn't mean that they don't have any self-control or that they don't have the ability to hold themselves accountable it's just like admiring a beautiful painting that is on a wall in a museum women get wildly jealous and take it to mean that there is some sort of insecurity within the relationship or that he just isn't as interested in her but once again, that is just a total lie. Number six, they can really think about nothing. They aren't thinking about leaving you or coming up with some scene in their mind when they are quiet. What happens with women is when men are thinking about nothing, we automatically assume that they are thinking about problems with us or was it something I said? Something is happening in his brain. He's planning his escape to leave me. That's what goes through our mind. It creates this deep insecurity within us because we don't have the ability to do that. No, it's because they're always planning, <clears throat> once again, telling themselves, right? They're planning their escape should things don't go right. Guys generally don't think that unless they, you know, uh, I'm not going to speak for all guys in all situations, but guys generally put up with a lot more bullshit relationships than women. If a woman goes quiet, you know in her that she uh, she's planning the exit. She's planning the, uh, the narrative just the way it goes. Love it. We have things going on in our mind all the time. And, you know, we tend to be a little bit more insecure in our relationships by nature when it comes to our personality. So we will make stuff up in our head, uh, worst case scenarios. And, you know, we, we just think about all the things. That Girls are just mental, aren't they? It's like, I can't comprehend um, how, how the mind works. Constantly on edge, constantly anxious, constantly coming up with all sorts of stuff and hamstering. It, it is a lot of effort trying to date women. Um, especially as you get a bit older, as younger men, you just put up with everything. You just put up with whatever you whatever you have to to get some action because it's hard to get when you're young, unproven in life and haven't, haven't made yourself. You know, while I do talk about uh, my experiences like womanizing when I was younger um, and having a ball, I worked really hard like a little Jack Russell to get chicks. Like it was really hard. I put a lot of time and effort in, okay? Now, uh, on the other side of marriage, um, when I came out and I was like more established and or had a perception of being established, had a nice house and all that, guys. It was a completely different story. Um, I found it very um, lopsided to what it used to be. It was like the power dynamic had flipped um, and the women were more or less chasing me, okay? Or showing me interest and making it, or making it easy for me to pursue them. It can happen. There's so much on our mind at any given time. But sometimes men can just put that stuff aside. There's lies that we're told that he must be thinking about another woman or he must be thinking about who knows. But a lot of times he's like thinking about sex with you. That's, that's a lot of times what's happening. Not really. Generally when you're living with a chick, you're not thinking about sex with her because well, we get bored, right? So it's like, um, 
I can't speak for everyone. I know some guys can really uh, uh, handle um, not a lot of variety. Um, I, I struggled um, doing it. So I, I, I suppressed the demon in me, uh, the monster hunter in me um, to be, you know, live with a girlfriend and be married and all of that. Um, but I like variety. Uh, and yeah, I was not sitting around thinking about banging my ex-wife when I was at home with her. I was, if I was uh, even thinking about that, it might go straight to Pornhub, go straight to Jizz Hut or, or, or be pervert on uh, girls elsewhere and thinking, yeah, that'll be all right. Definitely not sitting there thinking about banging my own wife. But that's just me, boys. Number seven, men just want a mother. No, they don't. They want nurturing. They don't want mothering. And there's a huge difference between mothering and nurturing. And the big thing is mothering can be very condescending at times. It can sound like, you know, what are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you doing this? Versus yeah. nurturing is what can I get for you? Or better yet, what can I get when you walk in the door? Can I get you a drink? It's amazing. And I've, I've always really hated that comment that women uh, women um, say, especially ones that are struggling in the dating market. So you're only men, uh, men, men, men want a mother, want me to mother them or whatever. I say, no, they don't. They want someone to be nice to them. That's all they're really wanting. Um, they don't want to be obnoxious C-U-N-T, right? Or, or an obnoxious C-U-N-T with very masculine, aggressive, energy which is a lot of these chicks who are still single in their 30s and beyond like it, it, it was just my experience and they're talking about well i don't want another kid or they might have a kid or something well i don't want another kid it's like well yeah you know you're a single mum, so you can't really be picking and choosing but you'd hear all that bullshit or, or you'd see it in the dating app profiles want a boyfriend not a kid or whatever very very true knowing what he likes when he comes home and already having it made for him Women have this ability to predict people's needs before they even know what they, what other people need themselves. Just like knowing what kind of a cry a baby has, you know, whether they're hungry, sick, nauseous, gassed. Women have this All amazing right, ability to detect what is happening with that. All right, let's move on. All right, so moving on. Number eight, men just want sex. This is a huge one. Maybe when they were in high school. But men who are good, men who are kind, men who want to have a relationship with you, they want to feel comfortable with regards to sex and you giving your body to them. So many women are told that if you make a man wait, then he will leave or go find it from somewhere else. And that's once again, maybe the top 10% of men that all women- That was definitely me. If I knew that I was doing that, I was out the door. I tell you that much. Women are dating right now because they don't have, you know, patience to wait. That's the, the lie. But that's not, that's just not true. Men actually value other things as well. Most men do not want you to feel forced. They want you to feel safe. You know, they want to feel like you want to give your body to him. And it's a pretty big deal. I find, okay, I'm going to end it here. I find this to be actually a bit of a strange video because her, I think her audience is mostly men. She talks about men's uh, issues, but however, she's talking it to the perspective uh, to women, but her audience is men. So I do find it strange, but maybe they might learn some things off her. Once again, I'm very skeptical. I think she presents well. Um, she The points were pretty accurate, but really, how, how it's like me saying, once again, I'll use the analogy of I'm going to uh, make a video about how to deal with period pain and the top 10 ways to get through period cramping or whatever it is. I might be able to read the books. Uh, I might have the girls tell me about it, but I'll never be able to understand it. And, and so that's why I'm very skeptical um, of women that enter this space and try to champion men. I do think really they see it as a cash grab. They're a woman. She's a relatively attractive middle-aged woman. Uh, you'd have a lot of guys there who are struggling uh, with women who are like, yeah, she gets me and they're all watching her. And you know, she's obviously doing quite well out of her channel. So um, I take my hats off to her. It's hard, it's hard to do well on YouTube, but once again, as I said, very, very cynical. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.